everyone, Elliot here. Uh, in this video, I'm going to show you guys how to get the time lapses that you've seen on my X profile. So if you go over to, maybe you're coming from X, maybe you're watching it on there. And uh, I'm going to show you guys how I actually built the software for this. It's very simple. Um, but yeah, we're going to get right into that. So I have this GitHub repo right here, desktop PCs, Raspberry Pis, and MacBooks, right? So some prerequisites you're going to want is just having Python installed. So this will work on um, Windows PCs, MacBooks, and Raspberry Pis, Linux, all that. Um, you're going to want Python, right? Python 3. This was this was not tested on Windows. Some of the stuff might not work as well on Windows. You might have to do a little messing around, but that's what uh, these language models are for. You can talk to them and, and learn stuff and, you know, figure out figure out how to get things working fast. Um, you want to make sure that Git is installed, especially if you're on Mac or Linux. You will have to modify the setup command a little bit if you're using a virtual environment like Conda or UV. Um, but I just use the normal like Python V and V thing. Um, and then Homebrew if you're using a Mac or MacBook. There are multiple things in here. We have Linux, we have Mac, and we have Windows, right? So with Linux, you're just going to essentially git clone this into whatever directory you want. You're going to cd into this project. You're going to update all of your system dependencies, and you're going to upgrade them. You're going to make a virtual environment with Python 3. You're going to source into that. You're going to pip install argparse, uh, and then you're going to sudo apt install uh, ffmpeg and fswebcam. ffmpeg is going to be used for uh, actually taking all these stacked frames, all these stacked images, and combining them into one like video stream. FFmpeg is going to do that really quickly for you. Uh, and then FS Webcam is just like literally a terminal command where I can go onto a Linux machine and go FS Webcam and then some specs and it'll take a picture with the camera on the Linux device. Um, and then we're just making a directory called time lapse images where all of these images will be stored one by one. They're, they are names, so it'll be like one, one uh, image one, image two, image three, image four, and then it'll sort those so it can put them all in a, in a time based order together. Um, and then Mac OS, same idea. You're gonna, like all these parts are the same, except you're going to install OpenCV Python and NumPy as well. Uh, but this essentially just allows you to use the camera and there's no delay in opening it up. So the camera is a little resource on the system. You gotta open that up and then, then take a picture and then close it again. So OpenCV will just keep it open and then just keep another frame, another frame. It doesn't have to open or close to any of that. And then you're just going to um, make a new directory called time-lapse images. And then if you're on Windows, to go to code, and you're going to uh, download the zip file for it, you're going to unzip that. Uh, you're going to type Windows key and then command, so the command prompt, and then you're going to CD into your project folder, right? Just like this is an example. And then inside of that project folder, you're going to, assuming you have Python installed, you're going to make a virtual environment, you're going to source it, um, and then you're going to install uh, argparse and OpenCV. If we follow the, the MacBook instructions here, um, if I go git clone, awesome. Now I cd into time-lapse maker. Now I make a Python 3 virtual environment and then I source into it, pip install. I'm gonna make a directory called time-lapse images. And now if we want to actually go and record something, if we're running on MacBooks, we're gonna do the V1 uh, Mac OS. Uh, it should start taking pictures and it's off to the races. Okay, so after around maybe 10 frames, I'll stop this and we will see um, you go Python, create time lapse, and it will just use FFmpeg and boom, done. Uh, <laughs> that was only 10 frames, so it was very quick. But if we open this up, this is the one that we just took, right? So that was about 10 frames right there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. You, If you're using uh, Linux, you're going to use this script. If you're using MacBooks, you're going to use this one. And if you're on Windows, uh, you're going to use that script over there. Um, now I will update this. Everything should kind of just work as expected. Shouldn't be too hard to figure out, but uh, yeah, that's that's pretty much all it is. If you have multiple cameras connected like I do, I have a MacBook camera there and then my uh, webcam over here. Um, what you can do is you can actually pop into the, uh, say uh, Mac OS for example, and you can go to this capture time-lapse function, device equals zero uh, right at the top. You can change this to like one if it doesn't work. Change that to one, two, three, whatever. I, I usually start off with zero, and then if it doesn't work, you just kind of step upwards and see which one is the correct camera. Um, but given that, that, that's pretty much everything. If you want to add an, an, an extra clock to it, like if you want to add a clock to the time lapse that keeps track of like the time as you're going, um, 
you're going to have to install OpenCV. So that might not work super well in Raspberry Pis, but everything else it should. Um, and then uh, there's just a bunch of things you have to configure here. So if we go down, um, where was it? Yeah, so this the start time and the end date, the, the start time and the end time, you have to configure those. So just like play around with that. I won't explain it right now, but that that's for you to figure out. <laughs> uh, just just change the variables inside of here and see what the thing looks like. Do you like? And then to just finish things off, I always open uh, CapCut on my MacBook here. So that's CapCut. And uh, I will literally just drag the time, the, the finished time lapse after I do Python create time lapse and I have the MP4 file. I'll literally just drag it right into here and I have a bunch of, uh, so this is the current video I just, I'm like recording right now. Um, but what I'll do is I can go onto here and I can go speed and I can change it. So I'll do like maybe 1.5, 1.6, maybe two X. So that way it, it just kind of fits into a smaller time that, cause if, if I put a two minute time lapse up, people not, not going to watch that. If it's one minute or less then people might watch the whole thing. So I like to do that. Um, but you have this, and then I go into my finder. Uh, for example, if I were to, I look at just some of these like metamorphosis. Right, so I, I just have a bunch of these songs that I download from YouTube. You want to get, you want to avoid like copyright and stuff. I don't know how X enforces copyright, but you don't want to get the original version of a song or one that's very common. You want to get some sort of remix of it where there's like not, maybe not a very popular author or a, or a, a creator or publisher or something. Uh, for example, like either classical music, that's a good choice because that's not copyrighted. Um, or, or like Minecraft music, for example, that's not the original. Hi everyone. I will export that and I'll do video 1080p, usually 30 or 60 FPS depending, uh, and then just export and it's done.